I had an essay called Women's Tears Win in the Marketplace of Ideas. I don't know if you if you saw yeah, it. I've read it. But, yeah. So how much do you, how much do you think this is sort of because I, I would go with these cases and I would look at these videos of these people coming after professors. And it was like, you know, you'd see the headline, students do X. It's like it's not students, it's it's 10 women. It's just it's just women, right? You're, you're blaming all students. To what extent is you know do you see uh, uh, sort of the uh, the the shift in the sort of the atmosphere in the universities um, resulting from uh, from female activism versus the you know the student body as a whole? Well, I mean, I'm on the record as saying that the feminization of the academy has been a total disaster. Okay, because. What it has meant is that the values of the nursery and the kindergarten have now been elevated to the paramount considerations and the old traditional um, and traditionally masculine values of truth seeking, uh, of argumentation, of reason and evidence and objectivity um, have been downgraded. I mean, you know, it's one thing to say, well, we need to open these institutions to women. Um, and I think fundamental fairness provides a very strong basis for doing that. Uh, you know, we should open these institutions to talent, whatever form it takes. And that applies also to different ethnicities and different races, but it's quite another to say, well, now we're going to let, um, the, the interests of women or the values that women, uh, you know, elevate, uh, we're going to, to sort of let those become the paramount guiding values. We're going to displace all of the old practices and all of the old touchstones in favor of these. I mean, that wasn't part of the deal. That shouldn't be part of the deal. And, you know, you say, well, women's tears rule the day. Well, that just begs the question of why men let women's tears rule the day. There was a time, wasn't that long ago, all right, where men said to women, I'm sorry, but if you think that the values of the nursery and the kindergarten of, you know, making everybody feel good and included and warm and yummy, uh, that those are going to become the paramount values of the reigning values of the academy, um, I'm sorry, but uh, no, we're, we are not going to give in to that. We are going to resist that. We have good and sufficient reason for, um, for pushing back because over hundreds and hundreds of years uh, of struggle and, and, you know, uh, and analysis and effort, we have developed these post-enlightenment standards and we have them for good and sufficient reason. They have yielded all the great achievements and accomplishments of civilization. We believe in them. Uh, we are uh, willing to defend them. And we're not going to let you defeat them. In other words, why are men not standing up to women? They used to. Yeah, it's it's an interesting question. I mean, and one I've thought a lot about i mean i see these yeah i see these men and you know they're, they're just to live in fear i mean i feel guilty if why i have are some... you afraid of women why are they it's, i ask the same question why are we afraid of black students well why, you know why are we not willing to take charge and you know do our job and say to them no you cannot engage in emotional blackmail emotional blackmail is you know degrading and debasing and it's decadent and you're trying to destroy what we've built over hundreds of years. We're not going to let you. Yeah. I mean, did, did men, I mean, if you went up to a, a group of men, say, I don't know, a long time ago, decades ago, and you were a woman and you started, you know, crying, I think the natural instinct, even at the time, say the 1950s would have been, you know, to feel some kind of sympathy and say, okay, you know, whatever you want, you, you win the argument. I think it's a, it's a trope of sort of a, a popular culture that, you know, women complain or women nag, women cry, men sort of just let, let them get their way. Um, and, but, you know, you couldn't imagine someone from the 1950s say, well, you couldn't imagine the women, I think, having the nerve to say, okay, now you can't have free speech. Um, now these people can't express their ideas. And maybe it's, maybe it's the women, maybe men would have always submitted to women. Women just had never had the nerve to say, you know, everything we think, you know, should be, uh, however we feel should basically govern every institution in the country. Right. And we're going to change the standards. We're going to change the touchstones and the criteria because we have this kind of alternative 
feminist way of knowing or whatever, you know, that nonsense is. Uh, and you have to accept it. We are going to impose it on you. Well, you know, you can only impose something on people that they allow to be imposed upon them. And that is the part that I just have never understood why men don't fight back. Um, I mean, it's one thing to let tears rule in the private realm or in the family or whatever, but it's quite another to, you know, sanction this kind of invasion uh, in what were traditionally masculine realms uh, and which men, you know, in which men built something very valuable that they ought to be defending. Mm. Yeah, I had a review. Yeah, I had a review for um, uh, Claremont Review of Books by this article by this guy named uh, uh, I, forget, I forget his name. He wrote a book called um, I can't remember this. Hanania Claremont. I'm just going to Google myself and see. Uh, it was by um, a famous journalist named uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Rauch, The Constitution of Knowledge. Right, and so this yes. uh, this guy is a uh, he's a liberal. He wrote for like he used to write or still writes for the New Republic, and his book was about we have to stand up for Western civilization, Western values. Um, I know him well. Went, he's a very smart guy. Oh, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm sure he is. So, but my my critique of the book was, I mean, it's basically that you know he'll say things like you know these institutions like science and capitalism have been handed down to us. They come from. Uh, um, you know, they come from these people who happen to be white and they happen to be men, right? That has nothing to do with it. Now it's open to everybody. And, you know, others should, you know, partake in it and, you know, not have these, you know, leftist Marxist values or or whatever. And I, I just I just found that such a you know, such a cop out that it's just, you know, because you're going to be, you're, if you take that perspective, you're going to be very confused if Jonathan Rauch gets his way um and these institutions uphold free speech and uphold to meritocracy. Well, you know, there's not going to be gender balance. There's not going to be racial balance. And then, and then what do you say to that? You're always vulnerable if you're afraid of, you know, acknowledging these differences and the whole thing, just, the whole thing just falls apart. You can't, you just have to, you just have to reject the paradigm that you, you expect or need or want representation. If it happens, great. If there's some ethnic group that does particularly well and, you know, uh, can, can compete on equal terms, fine. But no reason to expect that for between every group, and especially the sexes. I mean, this I, that's why I, I find there's just some, something sort of empty about people who who go halfway. When I look at you, you're like you're like me. You're you're sort of willing to go all the way and say no. We have to acknowledge these differences and and be okay with them. Yeah, well, I think you're making a related point. I mean, you know, the first point we were exploring was, uh, you know, when women and minorities come in. Uh, are the people who previously controlled these institutions, are, should they acquiesce? Why do they acquiesce in the transformation of the standards and understandings and protocols that govern these institutions, which are now considered, you know, white male supremacy and, you know, somehow suspect? But I think you've now segued to another interesting point, which is related, which is one of the reasons in which there's been an attempt to change the standards and the meritocracy and the protocols is because if we retain those old touchstones, we will not have equal outcomes and we will not have equal representation in of, you know, either of women or minorities for different reasons. I mean, for minorities, the problem is once again, this achievement gap, this ability gap, which is very awkward and embarrassing. Uh, if, for example, if we maintain an objective meritocracy to the extent that we can. It's never perfect, but my position is we should try to do it, you know, to to the maximum extent possible. Uh, then we are not going to have proportional representation of all groups because, as things currently stand, groups are differently abled, so to speak. You know, for whatever reason, without even going into the reason. This is just the way it is. So that's the problem when it comes to, you know, racial representation. When it comes to women, um, you know, ability isn't as big a factor, although on the right tail of the bell curve, I think it does become a factor. And that's that's a sensitive subject in itself. There are more male geniuses than there are female geniuses for, I think, a mixture of cognitive and uh, personality related reasons drive-related reasons, ambition-related reasons. Um, but you're going to have institutions and, and, and standards and activities that are not as attractive to women, where women don't feel 
you know, as comfortable or as included uh, as men do. Um, and you're not going to get proportional representation of women. So women are adamant that they want, you know, it to be 50-50 or even more than 50-50. They have no problem with the idea of women being an outsized presence in the academy. But in order to make that happen spontaneously, they, uh, they believe that the academy has to change, um, that the kind of rigorous hierarchical conventions, so to speak, of the academy are keeping women out somehow or yeah. driving women out. 